Actually, I'm gonna play some music while I'm doing this. Hang on. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. So, one of the unfortunate things for me, for a Kansas City guy living in California, is that Kansas City has a brewery called Boulevard Brewery. And uh, they make the best, most amazing beer I have ever tasted in my short 34 years, soon to be 35, God, 30, almost 35 years on this, on this wonderful, uh, wonderful world. So here's what I'm gonna do. I wanted to make a little bit of a video, mostly because I'm losing my effing mind during this quarantine stuff. Um, I've taken it upon myself to grow my nice beard out here. <laughs> And, and shave shave this part of my head, but keep keep the top long, because that's how my girlfriend likes it, and what, what my girl wants, my girl gets. Um, but what I wanted to do is, since there are a lot of friends of mine out there who, I guess, are just kind of adrift in the world when it comes to beer. They just go and get quantity, over quality. So they'll go and pick up, you know, a Bud Light or a Corona, which is not, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your thing, by all means. But those are, I have a word for those types of beers. I call them lake beers. Now it's, it's kind of weird, but let me explain. When I was growing up, uh, my family, we all pitched in and we had, we had a lake house uh, on uh, Table Rock Lake. It's one of the lakes of the Ozarks in the Midwest. It is absolute heaven to me. Um, and we, we had, had our own dock. It was awesome, a boat slip and everything. And uh, when you're out on the water all day and you know, you're know you going on boat trips, doing wakeboarding, water skiing, cliff jumping, diving off the top of your, <laughs> off the top of the dock and all that stuff, you know, you're, you're doing a lot and, and it can be pretty taxing. So what, what we tend to do is, we go for really, really light, crisp, refreshing beer that doesn't really take a lot to drink. Basically, you're, you know, your, your Bud Light, your, your Coors, your Mick Ultra, that type of stuff. The stuff that you could drink all day, nonstop, and maybe if you're lucky, get a slight, get a slight buzz. But um, when, when it's, you know, when it's, nighttime and I'm I want something that I could actually taste and this is where Boulevard Brewing comes in these bad boys right here my little my little family right here this is what I go for and a lot of a lot of you younger dudes out there you'll drink you'll drink the lightest beer you could find non-stop because it's easy. So you end up not even experimenting with different types of beer and learning about the wonderful, wonderful things that Kansas City, my hometown, I think it even says it. Yeah, there, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says, it says uh, Kansas City, Missouri, right there, Boulevard, Tank 7. So the reason I wanted to start, this is my first time ever doing like a beer review. And like I said, Corona, has me going insane. Uh, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a little review and say why. Yeah, and I promise I won't. I won't make this video too long. It's already gone on for almost five minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that down. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through this beer and just it's it's a farmhouse ale. It's a, it's a saison. Even says right there, American saison, and. What's really interesting about Tank 7 is it is the only beer I've ever come across that is refreshing enough to drink in the summer, but is robust enough to drink in the winter. I have, I have never ever come across a beer, another beer that could manage to do that. 
um, so the three different varieties, or at least what, what you could usually get here in California, I got these from Total Wine, so shout out to them for selling every type of alcohol I can imagine. They've helped, helped me get through this quarantine. But basically, there's this, this big old boy right here that'll even say uh, what, I can't remember what the, I just call it a handle of beer, that's what I do. But you got this big boy right here, got the cork in it and everything. Got the cans. This is a new addition. This is, um, I, they, I don't think they started making cans until like just a few years ago. And then this right here, this is, this is your standard. This is what you're gonna get in a, a six pack, basically. So, I'm gonna grab, you know what? I'm gonna grab a glass too. So for something, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here by myself. This is literally me talking to myself because my girls and the phone fell because my girl's at work. I'm just here by myself doing a beer review because I can't, <laughs> what else is there to do? I've watched everything on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime three times through. So you know what? You're gonna join me for a beer review. So yeah, these are not twist offs. I, I just, I, manlier men than me can just, you know, take the teeth or something, but my teeth are already messed up. So we're not gonna do that. All right, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Now, those of you out there who are more, a little more masterful at pouring, probably tell me what I'm doing wrong. See, the head's a little big on that. So you don't, you might, you may want the head more like, right there lol um so yeah this this beer like i said it's it's a farmhouse ale so it's it like i said very very robust the flavor profile uh it doesn't really it doesn't really dissipate it hits you on the front end hits you on the back end hits you everywhere <laughs> gosh mm. oh, it smells really good um that's that's another thing with beers that are, I guess, um, finer quality beers, uh, they actually have a scent to them. So uh, for all you kids out there that would like to start taking beer seriously, a lot of people think it's it's a, a snob thing. It's a beer snob thing to, to smell your beer. I don't know about you, but if food smells good, I tend to smell it. Like when the when a server is bringing your a, a really nice like steak to your to your table and you I, I don't just cut into it and scarf it I do do that sometimes but I like to smell it and and breathe it in because it's it's awesome and yeah it has a really good oh god that's really good it's really good yeah it's I'm, I know this sounds cliche but this is a farmhouse ale it really does it, I mean it just that's that. With this, you get an actual smell of like wheat and hay and just everything is right there. It's not, it, it, none of that artificiality or what I like to call the aluminum taste that you get from like Bud Light and all that stuff. Cause they, they, they're such weak beers that they kind of take on the taste of whatever container they're in. So for me, one of the things, what I, I, one of the, I prefer Bud Light out of a red Solo cup as opposed to just out of the can because I think the cup is less pungent than the darn aluminum. So now we're gonna, now we're gonna taste this. Oh. That's what I needed. I needed that right there. I haven't trimmed my mustache at all, so. So whenever, whenever I'm drinking a nice frothy beer, it gets, gets all over, gets all over to me mustache right here. I'm trying to grow it out as, as best I can. I kind of have it trimmed on the sides right here, as you can see. Oh, and I've got my, I've got my shirt, Whiskey Business. So that's, that's probably my, my favorite shirt. I think I've, I've worn it like twice a week, every week now for the past however long. But, um, but yeah, beer like this, one of the reasons also you pour it in a, in a tulip like this is because for, for 
uh, stronger ales and stuff like that, the, the contour of the glass, the shape of the glass, actually, actually helps with you being able to taste different, different elements of the beer and even smell different elements of the beer. And in, in a, a lot of times, um, so if you ever wonder why beer glasses, them sit, if I actually have one. Yeah, so if, if you ever wonder why beer glasses are actually contoured the way they are, I don't know if you could see it really well, how it kind of fans out at the edge right there. It's, it's because the different types of, of brews that you put in it have um, their, their aroma profiles arrive at different times. And so glasses are, are contoured in the way that they are to deliver that at, I guess you could say maximum capacity. But yeah, like I said, just, just for, for those of you, and um, I guess if I'm being honest, this is mostly, this video is mostly aimed at younger dudes because I spent my, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to state that I didn't start drinking until I was 21. So hopefully this video doesn't get flagged for that. But when I first started drinking, I wasted probably a good six or seven years just drinking absolute crap, absolute detritus, and it was and it was awful. So this video is kind of aimed at, at younger guys to like like all you 21, 22, 23 year olds, get out there and actually try a quality beer for once. It is worth it, I, I promise you. And it is also kind of interesting, the first time you introduce something like this to your other guy friends that only drink Coors and all that stuff, and they go, oh man, what is it? This doesn't even taste good. And you're like, yeah, yeah it does, moron. It does taste good. Yeah. <laughs> A little cabin fever in here, okay? So, now, for any of the young ladies watching this too, I know there's a lot of female beer connoisseurs out there. A lot of people, a lot of people kind of, kind of sleep on that. They don't think that, um, you know, they think that that the only thing that that young women drink is is those frou frou drinks or just vodka this, rum that. But I, I have my ignorance has been shattered because I have actually met a lot of awesome, awesome women out there who are really into their beer. So, so, ladies. This is this is for you too, okay? You need to get out there and start trying trying better beer than just lake beer, which is what I'm going to collect be collectively referring to um uh to to the the cheaper beers out there, the 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 Mick Mick Ultras and and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, Tank Seven is is probably I'm gonna be honest with you, if you're used to doing nothing but like Budweiser, maybe don't do this one yet. Maybe start working your way up to like, try try, try different things, man. Try IPAs, stouts, um, pale ales, just just stuff to, to get your palate, I guess, a little more flexible. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said, cabin fever. Okay, it's all right. Um, so yeah, tank, and the, the, um, the funny thing about Tank 7 is the reason it's called Tank 7 is because the brewers of Boulevard were trying an experiment and uh, with different um, tanks, which, was, which is what beer is brewed in, and um, all, none of the batches worked, really worked to their satisfaction, but a mistake happened in Tank 7, and they thought they were going to have to just blow the whole experiment, but, but one of the brewers tasted the brew from Tank 7 and absolutely loved it. And this is one of the flagship brews uh, from Kansas City uh, uh, Brewing, Boulevard Brewing. So this is, this is my first beer review video and I wanted to start it with, with a classic, with Tank 7. Ladies, fellas, get out there and, and start experiment. Cause, because I mean, come on! During during this lockdown, what better what better thing to do than to start experimenting with beer? Am I right? And and whatever other alcohol, or heck, experiment with anything you want. <laughs> All right, I love you guys. This is Bobby Bliss, first beer review. I will talk to you later.